Hello and welcome to a video covering AQA A2 chemistry uh, structure determination. Okay, and so basically, let's look at proton LMR. So, what do you need to know? You need to know that for proton LMR, okay, your shift values are based on the hydrogen environments in your compound. And you need to know that there is splitting, which follows an n plus 1 rule. So, the splitting for this. Okay, I'm just displaying symmetry here in this molecule, which is one way they like to catch you out. So these six hydrogens all produce the same shift value, because they're all in the same environment, either side of this very polar carbon double bond oxygen. Okay, they're all either side, and they all produce the same shift value. But what would the n plus 1 rule produce? Well, n plus 1 rule is where it's the number of peaks... Um, of this shift is due to the number of hydrogens on the adjacent carbon. So the number of hydrogens on this, in this molecule, well there's none. So 0 plus 1 to make a singlet peak will be produced. Okay, so other ones, if that had a hydrogen on, say if that was a, an alcohol and we just had OH and we didn't have this bond, we had it like this, it would produce a doublet peak. Okay, Integration values, you will be given this with proton NMR, and it's just simply the number of hydrogens producing that peak, and you'll be given it as sort of ratios, you may have to multiply up to get whole number ratios, but hopefully the question will be rather clear and explain that to you. Carbon NMR has no splitting. It is simply based on the carbon environments. You don't have to worry about any sort of n plus 1 rule, just the shift values. Unexpected values, in particularly in infrared, will be due to impurities in the molecule. And in infrared spectrometry, you have to know that the fingerprint region of compounds, so hence the very specific sort of absorption of these compounds, is below 1,500 centimetres in wavelength. Okay. Fragmentation. This is at very polar bonds. As I've drawn, there's a polar bond here. I accidentally drew like a extra hydrogen. So, um, and I've drawn the lines of splitting. These are the splitting lines. Either side of this polar bond, and traditionally that's that's all you really need to know is it it will split either side of these polar bonds. And produce these sort of positive molecule and radical. Now it is always the positive molecule, hopefully you can remember from unit one chemistry, this is unit four, that it will be the positive molecule, okay, that will be detected. If you're asked to draw the fragments, obviously the positive one is detected, so I'm just going to draw a standard equation. We have our molecule here, or compound, I could really call that. You need to draw the plus and the radical like this. I need to show it producing, this is what's observed, I guess, I'm going to call that O. Okay, now you can put it outside like that, or you can put it on the positive from the carbon, I'd imagine, most of the time. Um, probably not going to get you to do anything else. N plus, let's just call this X, and this is our radical. And you can put that on the specific atom that it will be, or I believe you are allowed to put it on the outside of square brackets. TMS. Tetramethylsilane is SiCH3-4 or SiCH3-CH3-CH3-CH3 like this and it's used because it's inert, non-toxic and has a low boiling point meaning it, it can be removed from the sample easily but also produces a very far right singlet peak and it is this value that we call zero. Okay, we call this our standard value, and it's and it's used in both carbon and proton NMR. Solvents. Okay, this is obviously not a solvent. For our solvent, however, we are gonna use C D C L3. Best for proton NMR have any just hydrogens. It can be used in carbon because we know the value that it produces. Um, so it's absolutely fine fine for that as well. So always use this solvent and it's good because it actually 
I don't use C seal four. This is better, uh, rather because it's pollen, so it's better for pollen molecules as well as a solvent. And that's pretty much all the skills you need to know. Now I recommend you go and do basically a bunch of past papers, um, past paper questions with regards to this topic, um, because that's the way you're best going to learn. These are just simply the skills and the little bit of knowledge you need to know. The rest of it is about working out the compound and making sure you remember sort of the n plus one rule, integration values, using shift values, um, anything like that. All those skills and the rest of it is just knowing TMS that it's in a non-toxic low boiling point, far right single peak, um, fragments are at either side of polar bonds, anything like that. So that's pretty much it for this.